Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC Mexico City from a contrarian uh, betting perspective. And for those of you who are here for the first time, what we do here is something pretty unique, I guess, to uh, MMA betting content. We're not really trying to figure out what's the most likely thing to come in. Um, what we're trying to do is just really figure out where the public is, where the overwhelming narratives are, where the stories are that just are just so easy to tell. Because in, in the world of gambling, whether it be on gambling, on MMA or on sports or in the stock market, um, a lot of the line is really driven by narratives and, and by groupthink. And, and when one group of people get a hold of some idea of what could happen, everybody else seems to pile on. And yes, there, there are some sports where this dynamic is not quite as strong. But from, but from what I have found uh, following uh, UFC, is that this sport is ripe for groupthink, just, just swarming a lot. Um, I guess it's because, again, for those of you that hear this time and time again, I guess it's because even though, you know, you have two fighters who are just, just going after each other with everything that they have, people get really into the analysis and kind of settle on just two ways that a fight could go. It's either X wins this way or Y wins that way. And essentially, once the people get a hold of this, they share that information and everybody starts to believe it to the point where it's not just this is more likely to happen. It's more like this is going to happen. And there's a huge gap between something is most likely to happen and something is going to happen. And the lines on the most popular uh, outcomes tend to be just extraordinarily overbet. And it's seen, and, you know, that makes that makes so a lot of sense. You know, that if everybody will agree on uh, two ways of winning and there's a prop market out there, then that's where most people are going to bet. So the prop, the bookies are going to continue to juice the lines against them. And but at the end of the day or at the end of the week, but metaphorically, at the end of the day, those are going to be the poor, the poor wagers. And uh, from a straight betting perspective as well, it also could happen sometimes that everybody gets really swarmed on one side. Uh and that happens as well. Just, just people just get settled that even though somebody's like minus one sixty, whatever, it becomes so obvious that person's going to win that everybody plays, you know. And it's crazy. So, so those types of narratives again are usually creating value on the other side. So, the purpose of this is not to flex my knowledge of MMA, really. It's just kind of to flex the way that I kind of handle markets in general and i again the goal of these videos is to teach and and to instruct and to give you guys some tools to use in the future and yeah hopefully you win this uh you know you win this card but more important i i, I really want you guys to learn how to think in a contrarian basis and to really be suspicious about about things that just seem obvious where you have uh, a sport that's ripe with chaos which is what the ufc is uh, all right. So let's get into it. And before we do, let's go over the rules. We are going to be betting one thing on every fight. And uh, obviously, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second thing is that for each fight, we're going to be betting one unit. And of, co of course, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is going to continue to be $180, 10 times high. That's good luck. So uh, again, and I just think it is healthy to when people say what, that they're betting units and things like that, to say how much they're betting. I don't know. I, I know that everybody's unit is different, and I know you could you know, extrapolate that to different wagers and different different people that are watching my stuff might have different unit sizes. But I still think that if someone's going to say that they're betting something, it's a good idea to say exactly what it is. And more to the point, I'm actually going to put the bets in, which you guys watch it, as much as Zoom will allow. If not, I'll do it as soon as, uh, as, soon as, as soon as uh, we... Uh, as soon as we stop this. All right, so let's just get started. Uh, first fight of the night, we have, um, oh, wait, before I forget, one last rule is that since we are gonna be contrarian, we like to have some fun with this. And we wanna presume that every fight that we uh, that we uh, we bet, we're gonna lose. So what that means is that in the main event, we're gonna have to try to get it all back. So what we're gonna do is, because there are 13 fights, we are going to make sure that in the, in the main event, we're gonna bet something you're gonna get at least 12 to one, um, so you're always in the month, always in the game. Anyway, uh, Eric Silva versus Muhammad Naimov. There was a whole bunch of steam on this. Uh, Naimov was like minus 300 and he moved up to minus 550 pretty quickly. And 
well, the best I can do as far as this fight is is share the real common narrative. Two of them that are going around is number one is that how is Naimov like minus 500 over anybody? That's one thing I'm hearing. And the other thing is that Eric Silva is going to bring like a full wrestling game plan. And we haven't really seen Naimov deal with that. As a matter of fact, when Naimov was against uh, Jamie Malarkey, even though we did get the, the knockout eventually, he got taken down a couple of times. So it's possible that Eric Silva might have a style edge here. So uh, the combination of those two things that Naimov is just, why is he so expensive? And Eric Silva has this path to victory. I think that you, in a weird way, like Silva might be the popular play. You know what I mean? Like, I don't say popular, but I think that that is more justifiable than laying the minus 50 with, with Naimov. So we can't really bet Silva if we're being contrary. And I know that seems kind of counterintuitive, but that that's kind of the way it is. If anything, we have to do something where we're playing Naimov. Um, so Naimov does have knockout wins. So I presume that we can't bet that. That's probably overvalued. The only two way things you can do is you can play Naimov by decision. And certainly that makes some sense. Or if you really want to be saucy, you can play nine law by submission with, with the idea that, you know, that Silva is going to be going for the takedowns. And whenever there's takedowns in the mix, submissions might follow. So even though nine law doesn't really have submission, submissions on his record, um, I think that nine law by submission could be live as well. So it's going to be either nine law by submission or nine law by decision. Let's take a look and see the differences here. Um, Naimov by, well, it's about the same. So Naimov by some decision is going to be plus 200. Naimov by submission is going to be plus 300. So we'll take Naimov by submission uh, for the brand, so to speak, for 180. All right, Luis Rodriguez versus Denise Bondar. Um, so Denise Bondar, all he's done is just disappoint. Um, he's, you know, he's... A big favorite against Malcolm Gordon. He got just basically lit up. Then he was really bad in his last fight. Um, and, and now what they're saying is that this is kind of his last opportunity. Not his last opportunity. They really want to give him a fight that he can win. So what they did that, they brought this like this rookie from Mexico in. And the rookie's a favorite. <laughs> so my point is that if they're if they're gonna really try to get him a win, and Rodriguez is the favorite. I mean, that, sh that should really tell you something. And Rodriguez is probably a lock here. So let's just take Rodriguez minus the 122. Um, I, I have no idea how he's going to win or anything like that. So let's just play him minus the 122, even though, you know, they're trying to get Bondar the win, whatever that means. All right. Uh, Victor Altamirano versus uh, Felipe Dos Santos. All right. So Felipe Dos Santos, this is a... a, a this is a uh, classic situation where someone is getting all kinds of, of hype and uh, love because of how he did in a loss. Um, he was against Manel Cap in his last fight, and, and granted, he was really, really good, um, even in the loss. And the other thing is you're, you're getting is a whole bunch of narratives, uh, not narratives, is, is all this talk about how exciting he is, how he's, I've heard that he's, as aggressive, if not more aggressive, than uh, than Charles Oliveira, and, and he's from that shoot day box gym. And as a, as you as you know from previous videos, people love betting on shoot day box. I think people love just saying shoot day box. So you get that shoot day box tax, where I think that the combination of him having the pink hair, being from shoot day box, because people like to say shoot day box, coming off the win, very very aggressive. Um, but here's th something that really tells you all you need to know with all of that said his inside the distance line really isn't that much. I mean, if you look at his, his inside the distance line, you have, it's like, what is this? Uh, by TK or submission is plus two forty. for someone who's really aggressive and shoot a box and all that stuff. It seems like free money. So we know that that's not winning. Okay. So the only way he's going to win is by decision, probably. But I kind of just want to want to fade him. You know, I, I, there's all this stuff about the shoot day box and this and this and the other thing. And I'm also hearing also that Victor, Victor Altamirano's takedown defense is poor. So DeSantis is going to go for a bunch of takedowns and all that might be true. But 
all that just kind of leads me to want to fade it. So we're just going to take Victor Altamirano um, plus the uh, plus whatever the, the money line is, which is plus the 240. If we were, if you, I'll tell you this. If we really had it in us, I, I, would, I would just bet him by KO or something like that. Because that's the one thing about aggressive fighters. Things don't go their way. They, they, they're their faces out there to be hit. And Altamirano, you know, listen, he, he, he did knock out Lacerda, but aside from that, he really hasn't knocked anybody out. But Altamirano plus 1,200. Ooh, goodness gracious. Um, how about if I just played him inside the distance? That would be pretty sick. Let's see. Alta Morano inside the distance plus 700. You know what? Uh, I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm just, I'm going to play him just to win. Um, because if it's possible that the shoot day boss gasses out and then Alta Morano just keeps him at range and wins a striking base battle and whatever it is, and what's the decision? Boy, I really should do this, should not. Alta Morano inside. Plus 700. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, why not? This is losing. But I'm down. I'm down for it. All right. Uh, and, and I will be down for it. I'll be down from it. All right. Uh, Claudio Puelas versus Fares Zayim. Um, all right. So... Claudio Puelas is the guy that everybody likes to hate, okay? Because he's what they say, a one-trick pony, which means that he just only does one thing and it's really boring. He goes for the knee bar. And in his last fight against Dan Hooker, he was just an, an, an abomination, okay? Couldn't get anything going. Then he just sat on his butt on the ground and just let Hooker kind of tee off on him, hoping he can get the knee bar. And he was booed the entire, stop, the entire time. Um, nobody, nobody wants to play this guy. And as far as ZM, you know, he's, 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 he's solid enough. He can get some takedowns, reminds his P's and Q's and get the decision win. I get it. But let's, let's just take Claudio Plotless plus the 160. He's just way too hated for me not to play. And I, I guess the, the other thing is that why am I just playing him to win? Because you can't play him to win by submission because that's how everybody's expecting this fight to go. Uh, either he wins by decision or he loses. Excuse me. Either he wins by submission or he loses. So playing him by submission is just going to be bad value. We're just going to play him plus the 160. All right. Uh, Edgar Shires versus Daniel Lacerda. The aforementioned Daniel Lacerda, also from Shoot Day Box, also brings a hell of a pace. In his last fight against Kyrez, he, uh, he actually was better than and less reckless than previous I mean, he's actually had a more measured approach and he got a takedown and then just kind of got reversed or something and then he then he chiras got i think he got a submission that they 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 found it was too early or something like that so um the one thing i don't want to do is is do what's most obvious play this fight to go under or play this fight inside the distance um if anything you're probably supposed to go the over like the over one and a half or something like that, that probably is the most likely uh, contrarian bet here. Because I do think that people are going to play Lacerda just because people love playing him. I mean, even though he's an underdog, he could certainly get there. But here's the weird thing. I mean, you, if you're going to play him, you can't play him inside the distance because that's what everybody's 100% sure is going to happen. I really don't think I have it in me to play him by decision. Um so I'm probably just going to play the over. So let's just see. Let's, say, let's just see this. Lacerda by decision. Oh, my God. It's plus 1,800. Is it humanly possible for him to win by decision? I mean, I think it is, right? I mean, think of it this way. I mean, try a more measured approach. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what. This, this is going to be the deal. I'm going to pull up his fight logs, and if he has ever won a decision, 
I'm going to play. If he's not, I'm going to go over the one and a half. Let's take a look. I'm afraid. All right, let's see. Well, he's got 11 wins. You don't think any of them by decision? Let's see. Let's go backwards. Well, he's got to go backwards for some wins, first of all. All right, here we go. Oof. Rodrigo Sarafan, TKO one round. Asparilla, submission one round. Silva, submission one round. Arm injury, he lost one round. TKO one round. TKO round round. Submission round one. Round one. Round one. Round one. Round one. Round one. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, we're not we're not playing by decision, but but we can definitely play the over. Um, so popular would be over one and a half. Where is that? Fight lines? That what it would be? Um, over one and a half plus one sixty five for one eighty. Um. Ooh, uh, Luis Rodriguez had a had a line change. All right. Uh, let's move on. Jesus Aguiar versus Mateus Mondanka. So, I don't exactly get this one. Um. So we're we're just gonna go with it. So Mendonca, if you look at even his game logs, he came in and he got. He, well, he lost in his first fight to Basho. That's not terrible. And then he had a, just a terrible, miserable performance in his last fight. Um, he was basically holding on to with the leg of his opponent for, for a while. And then he just, just just was awful against Nate Manis. And he's fighting against Jesus Aguilar, who's, who's got that dog in him. You know, he's, he's Mexican. Just keeps coming. He's short. It's a fire plug. He's got fire. It's not the dog in the fire, the fight in the dog, or whatever the hell that thing is. Coming off a first round KO and, and yet still Mendonca's the favorite. I don't get it. So we'll just play. Mendonca minus the 130 for 180. All right. Um Christian Quinones versus Heine Bar Heine Barcelos. This is tricky. You know, I, I have heard a little bit on both sides. You you, you do have a a um you know straight boxer in Quinones against the Kind of the uh, uh, more of a Muay Thai striker that also has some takedowns in Barcelos, and I, I and Barcelos is a little older. He's coming off a layoff. You know, I, I've heard from both sides, so I guess the only thing we could we could think about is kind of like methods of victory. So if Barcelos gets the win. It's probably going to be from takedowns and going to a decision. I think both these guys are kind of presumed that if they win, it's going to a decision. So we're just going to play this fight to finish. Okay, that's the best I can do as far as here. So fight lines. Um, can we play fight to finish or no? Let's just see. Fight props. Fight to go the distance. No. Uh, minus 225. Wow. Oh, that looks terrible. We're really doing this? I, I guess so. Again, if I if I if I ignore my process, why did why is this favorite? Well, you know what? Such a terrible line. Probably should bet. All right, let's just do it. Maybe we won't go actually. zero and uh, zero and hundred this week. If we if we put, take, take something that's not a big underdog. All right, let's move on. We have Manuel Torres versus Chris Duncan. Uh oh, this is going to be nasty because this. Is another one. This is a war. It's a complete war. You have both fighters are killed or be killed, and they're going to keep it, come out swinging, and someone is going down. So we're going to have to bet the over again. Uh, Torres, Duncan, just a question of whether we want to go over one and a half or go for the fight to go to decision. Ouch. Let's just take a look. Well, first of all, let's see. The over under is one and a half. Well, it's the same as the as the as the Chares fight. Plus one and a half, you get one sixty. What if we get to go the distance? Plus four fifty. I mean, this isn't this isn't bad. I mean, I'll put it to you another way. If this fight does make it past one and a half, 
think it does go to decision. How about that? So let's let's go for it. Fight to go to decision. Plus four fifty for one eight. That's the only thing. The Lacerda fight is no guarantee to. Oh boy, maybe I should have done that. Well, you know, we'll, we'll spread our contrarian takes. It's the same bet, right? To bet this fight that just has to finish to not finish. One of them will bet to actually go to decision, and the other one will bet to only go to two and a half rounds. Okay, that's fine. Yasmin Uruguay versus Sam Hughes. Um, so this fight reminds me of that uh, first fight. The uh, what's his name? The uh, the Naimov fight. I mean, laying five seventy five on someone who just lost is kind of who was lost recently is kind of kind of sketchy. And Sam Hughes has put on some good performances. I don't know if anybody's actually laying five seventy five on Uruguay. If anything, I see people betting, taking shots at Sam Hughes. So we're not going to do that. We're we're going to have to just just eat it and, and take. Uruguay here. Um, and I guess what we're going to have to do is the most least likely outcome. And that would be probably, I don't even know what it is, right? So what are people saying here? Well, Uruguay is faster. She's stronger. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is terrible. I, I can't just, I really should just lay the 575 just on principle. Because there's not even, you know, there's not even a, a preferred method of victory. Let's just take a look. How about this? We'll go with what the most, we'll go with the biggest price, whether it's her by decision or her by finish. How about that? I don't even know what the answer is. So let's do that. So let's see. Uh, winning method. First of all, Uruguay by decision is minus 120. So I guess that means you're going to get a, you know, plus something inside the distance. Let's see. Uh, yeah, plus 165 inside. Yeah, let's do it. Uruguay inside the distance for 180. Raul Rosas versus Ricky Tercios. Ouch. This is going to hurt. You're not going to like it. So you have Raul Rosas Jr., who's a world-class grappler. And you have Ricky Tercios, who has atrocious takedown defense. So Rosas is going to just take him down and submit him. And that's the end of the story. So we're just going to have to take Tercios. I'm sorry. Tercios plus the 185 for 180. Styles make fights, right? How is Tercios winning? Probably never. But it's not like he's plus oh, 800. Someone's playing them. So Tercios plus 185. I apologize. I know that's going to lose, but we have to we have to stay true. Daniel Zellhuber versus Francisco Prado. Oh, you guys aren't going to like this one either. So Daniel Zellhuber is kind of like the golden boy. I think that's his nickname, the golden boy. And Mexico has been hyping this guy up from the beginning. I think his first fight, he actually took a loss. And then he, let me just, let's confirm that. Yeah, I think he lost to Trey Ogden in it. Just a miserable performance. Um, yeah. And then he went and he got, you know, a pretty uninspiring decision against Landon, uh, Landon Venata. And then he improved. He got he did get that submission, but he's still kind of known as this kind of this, this non-finisher. And the idea is that Francisco Prado, if you look at him, his last fight, he had a first-round TKO. He's got a bunch of TKOs. That if this fight goes to the city, if this fight finishes, it's going to be uh, Prado that gets the KO. So you can't bet Prado inside the distance. You can't. If anything, you can bet Prado by decision. But we're we're going to take the shot at the, that the the Zell Huber decisionator inside the distance. Okay, and to that point, I might just play him by submission. Let's see. Winning method. Yeah, we're going to do this. Zell Huber by submission plus the 500 for one. 
I mean, usually what happens in these situations where the guy gets a submission in his last fight and he's a favorite, big favorite, they'll just bet him to do the same thing, but they're not doing it this time, so we're going to take it. We're going to take the plus 500, Zell Huber by submission. We have some real lemons here this week, and even worse than last week. Um, Yair Red okay, with the two big main events here, we have Yair, and Yair Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega. And unfortunately, there's only one main event. In other words, we can you can only pick one to put to get the 13 to 1, and it's got to be the last one. So Yair Rodriguez and Brian Ortega, we have to get be a little uh, you know, play one unit on it. And it really is a tough one from a contrarian perspective, because I'm I'm hearing every which way. I'm hearing every which way. Uh, I'm hearing Yair, I'm hearing Ortega. The, the only thing I am hearing is that if it goes to decision, it's kind of hard for Ortega to win because Ortega might be submission or bust here. Um, so if there's anything contrarian you can do is probably Ortega by decision, and that's really gross, okay? I guess it's so gross, I think we're just going to have to do it. So let's let's try it. Ortega, oh my God, this is going to be so awful. Yeah, Ortega by decision, plus 650. How is this fight going five rounds with Ortega winning a decision? Beats me. All right. Uh, I promise you this. It's going to happen more than plus 650 because no one's playing. Okay, so let's like review all this stuff before we get into it. Uh, Naimov by submission, he's never got a submission. And if Eric Silva gets the takedowns, I mean, how is this going to happen? I don't know. Maybe one out of three times. One out of four times. Luis Rodriguez in a fixed fight for Dennis Bondar um, as the favorite? Who's doing this? I guess some people. I don't know. I'll, I'll try. Uh, Felipe Dos Santos, shoot a box. Aggression. He's going to get after it. Well, that happens. Uh, they better hope that there's not a counter punching KO here because they won't get paid the plus 700. Claudio Pel Plus, hey, hate him. Hate him. He's awful. He's just boring. He slays on the ground. So we'll play him plus 164. Uh, Edgar Shires, war, plus 165 on the over. Uh, Mateus Mondanka, um, just terrible fight IQ in his last one. And Aguiar, it's not the size of the fight and the dog and the dog in the fight. You take the guy from Brooklyn or whatever it is. Uh, you can keep it. We'll take Mondanka minus the 130. Quinones Barcelos, I don't know what we're doing here. We're actually laying 225 to go to finish. Ooh, seems stupid. So I guess it's going to work. Um, Torres Duncan, I mean, I don't, this, is, this is ridiculous. This is like throwing 450 in the garbage. They're both going to swing after each other. Uh, well, anyway, plus 450 there. Uh, Yasmin Uruguay, we only did this because it was the bigger price between uh, between decision and um, there's nothing really contrarian about this, but uh, I know that if there's anything going on, it's people playing some cues, so I have to play something on the Uruguay side, so I figured this would be the best of the given alternatives. Ricky Tercios, Styles make fights, and Rosas' takedowns and Tercios' lack of takedown defense. I don't even know why they booked this fight. We're only getting 185. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, Zell Huber, decisionator, okay, against Prado, who's the one that's going to be bringing the heat. Why are we planning him to finish? Specifically by submission, good luck, plus five. And Brian Ortega, he's going to actually make it five rounds and win a decision? Okay. Um, so all these going on, we better get something good at 12 to 1 here. So we have Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. I have to say that I, I was actually kind of shocked, okay, because I thought the people were going to be on both sides of this. I thought the people were going to be into Roy Val as an underdog. Listen, he, he fought the GOAT, basically, last, last night. He fought Pantoja, and it wasn't like he was, he, was, he was crushed. You know, he was, listen, he got taken down a bunch of times by a guy who was freaking insane. Um, but he kept fighting. You know, he had some strikes, and fight before that, he... he he knocked someone out, I think, in the first round or something like that. Let's go, let's go through this a second. Actually, we don't need to go through, okay? I, I was expecting all kinds of Roy Val love here, but I'm getting like literally 100% participation on the Moreno side. Is it because he won the last time? I, I don't know. And, and what's worse, I'm hearing that, that Roy Val is going to gas or something like that. 
I don't know about that. So I think that we're going to play something on the Roy Val side. I wish the Roy Val by decision is better than plus 12 to one. Cause I really think that's a pretty good look uh, from a contrarian perspective, but I don't think we're going to get it. Um, so we're probably going to have to play him in a particular round. Let's take a look at these odds though. Um, okay. Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Roy Val. Yeah. We're about the scissors only plus 700. Um, it is probably a good bet though. And it's pretty contrarian. It's just not getting the 700, that we, the, the, the odds that we need. So we'll take Roy Val in, 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 in a round. So let's see round props. Um, I mean, this would be pretty awesome. Roy Val round one. It's literally plus 12 to one. It's exactly what we need. And I, I know it can. But again, we're, we're violating the rules, right? Because we need to get, we need to win our money. Actually, yeah, we win 12 and lose and then lose 12, we're going to lose. So we have to go to round two. Roy Val hurts him in round one and finishes him in round two. How about that? Let's go. So there you go. We're going to stake all singles. For 180, it's going to be how much? Uh, we're going to accept the odds changes. $2,340. I'll, I'll try to bet it, but I can't because of Zoom Watch, which will have to It'll say looking around or something. Yeah, there it is. Um, but once I log off of this, we will. Uh, I will definitely put them in. And uh, hopefully it's a good sweat. And more to the point, hopefully you learn something about how to analyze these things. And you think that I'm like kind of crazy, right, betting this way. But all I can say is that is that this type of logic, at least, and this type of approach has proven very successful to me in many, many disciplines. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.